switch claim to shove, the portion of it that was within the right of way would be the association. You're correct. My name is Joe Fastaggi. I'm the applicant. This, I'm trying to talk my wife into downsizing, and this would be my home. At which point, um, I would certainly maintain it. If this isn't my home, then I would put something in the deed, some language to uh, re require the owner of this new lot to maintain the circle and the, um, the plow and maintain that paved area. The reason we have that, cir uh, that circle is I just thought it'd be a lot more convenient just to back out and then drive out into the into the road. And that's why it was designed like that. But it's only going to add to the aesthetic beauty of the property by maintaining that, that circle. That does does the, um, the way the driveway is being proposed, does that uh, allow for emergency vehicle turnaround through the driveway? To the, uh, question. To the, to the uh, hammerhead, yes. Yeah. So. Yes, it does. Okay. There's nothing there now. This is would yeah. be an improvement, uh, <laughs> and we are. I'm trying to get a hold of the fire chief for him to approve what we're doing. I talked to Bob Malley when before we designed this, and basically his comment was, "We're not maintaining it. We're not plowing it. As long as it meets the fire chief's requirements, you know, I'm satisfied. I've been plowing that road for 20 years now." Um, I don't expect that I'll be doing it for another 20. But that, that is part of the maintenance agreement. When we originally wrote the um, uh, road maintenance agreement in 1991, it was written with the understanding that another lot would be added. Um, it's now time to add the, add the lot, and we've uh, addressed the um, uh, addition of that lot to the road maintenance agreement. And this, this again, would be maintained by the... Um, by whoever plows and the and the association. Do you have more comments before we do the public comment? Um, yeah, I do have a question about. Um, okay. I, I we did get a letter about draining. So when I was looking at the plans, I see something about a proposed boulder wall. Not being an engineer or anything along those lines. What, what, the, what does that do? Are you holding back the, the soil, or does it have something to do with the drain? Can, if you could just explain that a little bit. It's a little of both. The boulder wall is, again, along the back of the lot here, ends up right up in here. The idea of the boulder wall, I'll use my arm to describe this, you've got a slope that comes down, it's all it's to the woods, and they want to pick that slope up. So the wall, it is a retaining type of a wall. We're proposing to use it with something we do pretty typically on projects, which is a dry laid boulder boulder wall with a slight you know, one to six uh, kilter to it. And that wall, I think, varies from about you know, one foot at the lowest section to about six feet or so at the higher section. And, and then at the top of that wall, the, wa the water currently sheets down across the back of the lot. <clears throat> that wall, we have a swale proposed. So it collects any runoff that's going there currently and diverts it, uh, diverts it around these lots here over to the, the, the drainage which goes to the culvert in the Mitchell Road. Look, looking at this map, um, which is lot three, it would appear that somehow or other you're running the water off onto lot three. Um, you, lot three, which is, if you're looking at that map, where you've got your pointer there. Mm -hmm. And yet you said it was running down, so the retaining wall at the bottom, where you've got the pointer there, is going to deflect more up onto lot three which is the normal runoff. Yet I see there's two ponds here. Where were they fed from? In other words, is this, a, this is a hill? This is, to, to this is on the side of a hill. Topographically, there's a high point probably in here. There's a home on lot three, and there's a sort of a belly, a belly in here. What we're proposing to do, and there's a low spot between the two lots right here. We're proposing to pick the grades up and through here, sort of for the back, the back of the house propose that retaining wall here, such that water that's going here will continue to go this way, water that's here will continue to go to the back of the lot and be picked up by the swale here and be diverted this way. So to the extent that there might be a smidge of land here where some of the water comes onto the lot, 
it may get picked up by that swale rather than going directly into the abutters. But for the most part, it's, it's, it's the lines. If, I, if I'm correct, then the left-hand part of that map is lower than the right-hand part of that map? The left-hand, you are correct. The left-hand is there lower. Lower there than we are on the right. Correct. So the water that hits that retaining wall is going to flow on that map to the left. Correct. Correct. Away from lot three. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I'm continuing along with that. Okay. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't. Does, that, does that answer your question clearly enough? You all set, Henry? Sorry, yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Victoria, go ahead. I, then on the right-hand side, um, so uh, will the right-hand side that's buffering lot three also be picked up uh, within that 20-foot buffer? This area over here? Will you be doing any work around the 20-foot buffer on lot 4A that is against the edge of lot 3? Will that be lifted up too? Because it's, it's quite, it looks like there's a lot of vegetation, a lot of trees. Will there be do on the, the buffer between lot 4A and lot 3? The buffer between lot 4A on this map is right here. On this map, to be clear, it's right there. here. Mm -hmm. Yes, what we have is, again, is that there's some ledge that's sort of a high point of you know, somewhere up in here. Yeah. And we're, we're proposing, uh, there's going to be some cutting in here. We're proposing some adding some additional trees in here. But there's still a pretty good buffer. There's a pr pretty good wooded buffer between the two lots if we were to take a look at it. And I think I provided some photographs in the back of the application to suggest what that looks like on, on the map to help give it a sense of character what that, that looks so like. So there will be some work within that 20-foot buffer, but you are proposing to add more trees yes. at that spot. Because I saw the uh, additional trees being added up in the... Um, the T hammerhead area, but I didn't see that on the, these plants. Okay, and, and it's, it, no, we haven't gotten to the comment section with this Seth, and maybe I'll jump in here. What we had proposed because of the trees were in the right of way, there was a comment that if they're there, then it becomes part of the association. In our revisions, we would probably propose to move these onto the lot so that they're just they're out of the T. It was just for aesthetic purposes. We wanted some trees up in here, but uh, due to the engineer's comments and our proposed revisions back to the board, we would suggest we put the trees back in here. Okay, and the trees, I saw the pictures, and the, the pictures look like there's some evergreens right now. Is a buffer between lot 4A and lot 3? So I would wonder if you could get evergreens back in there, there's which is a nicer foot, buffer. There's a no-cut buffer on lot number 3. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Is, is there some place I can speak into it? Can you hear me now? Yeah. There's a you can black hear me? microphone right in front of you. This follow right here? Okay. Yep. There's a 20-foot no-cut buffer on lot number three. Mm -hmm. The trees that initially were there were misplaced. I had told Rick we want to do some infill planting of evergreens. Obviously, they'd have to be in my property since I can't do anything on lot three. But we would fill them in probably about halfway from Rosewood Drive onto the lot and then beyond. Um, there are some, some um, evergreens there now. But we will, we will do some infill just to have a living buffer there. But there is a 20-foot no-cut buffer on lot 3 existing, and um, it's, it's pretty substantial. Okay. And will that buffer no-cut also apply to lot 4A? No. 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 I mean, this, the house, you would have approximately 30 feet from the um, property line to the house and you need a minimum of 20 feet to build the house and prevent uh, pine trees from growing up and then causing mold and other problems with the house. So we're proposing to leave that. If we do plant some trees, they would be on, on the back side of the lot, not where the house is. And that's why I say about halfway back, there will be some in, infill uh, plantings, but not right where the house is located okay. on the lot. As far as that buffer no cut, didn't the previous plans that were submitted say something about this subdivision would have a buffer and we would follow any previous plans? Well, the, the, the current approval does have a 20-foot no-cut buffer, but at any point an applicant can come in and ask for an amendment to the subdivision plan. Okay. So their, their, They're asking their for an plan amendment. could, you know, you could create a new lot and not propose the, the no-cut and it would be um, a new approval that would layer on top of the old approval. Okay, so they're proposing the no cut. Thank you. So they're proposing they're not, they're to eliminate, eliminate the no cut, the no cut zone that currently exists at the edge of what is now 
the boundary between or, the undivided lot four that's what, and or, lot three. Or any other activity, because um, I believe your septic is in the part of your septic is in the 20-foot buffer. Well, it's 20-foot from the property line. Um, and quite honestly, I can't remember a 20-foot no-cut on lot number four. I know we had it on other lots, but I don't remember it being on, on lot number four. I will go back to my records and check. I, I know that on three of the lots, we had no cut, and on the, on, um, I, I know we planted additional trees on lot number three when we developed it. But I can't remember a no-cut buffer, and we will look through our plans. Okay. Maureen I can't doing remember it now. either. Maureen is doing it now. Um, you also had another question about uh, what we're doing on lot three to assist in the drainage. Uh, yes, on lot what you're doing on lot four. Okay. This is with drainage with lot we're, three. Okay. We're starting. This is lot three, and again, you can see there is about a 20-foot. Um, portion of lot three that is beyond my lot. So we're going right into lot three with these, um, um, I'm going right into lot three with the, with the stone boulders and we're going to try to catch what water that I legally can do that's coming down from lot three onto lot 4A. So we're, we're trying to collect as much water as we can. Uh, this portion, I really don't have a control on, so I can't, I can't collect. But we're doing the best we can to collect as much water and divert it down into this um, stream that's already there. It's been existing forever and a day. And as Rick indicated, this was land that I, I gave to the town when we um, did these other subdivisions. So we're going to try to collect as much water as we can and slope it down. Um, away from the lots on, on Mitchell on Mitchell Road. And I know you've got some communications and there's a gentleman here this evening that I'm sure you're going to hear from shortly and he's going to say a few things. But um, we talked with uh, Mr. Stanton some a couple of years ago to try to work out a plan and we're still open to discuss what we had proposed at that time and you know, we want to make sure that he's comfortable. Patiently waiting. <laughs> uh, so um, I went and looked, walked down the road, and um, I, there, I saw a lot of standing water. I saw some large, one very large, uh, wind-blown tree in a wet area on the proposed lot 4A. Um, and so I, anecdotally, it just looked like there were drainage issues along all of Rosewood Drive. And then I see here that you're asking for a waiver on a stormwater management plan. And I just wanted to know a little bit about that because personally I would like when we evaluate the application to have a stormwater management plan that um, the town engineer then reviews. And could you talk about why you requested a waiver on that? I'd be, be glad to. Um, strong, the reason typically a stormwater management plan would be done for an entire project. When we're doing a single lot um, to try to to try to do an analysis using a TR20, TR55 method, it's not applicable to a single small lot. So in a case like this, uh, what we proposed is the amount of disturbance, the amount of work we're doing is minimal relative to the entire watershed, very minimal. It's, it's a single lot. Yeah. But the approach then is to look at erosion control and focus on best management practices. So what we did was say, look, water now is coming across the lot this way. Let's divert. There's already a drainage here, which goes to a culvert in uh, Mitchell Road. Sorry, get that in your face. And then to a wetland beyond. Let's divert the water. And, and Mr. Prestacci wanted to build at the back of the lot anyway. Let's swale the water along the back of the lot on his property, put that into the existing drainage as it should go. And, and that, in effect, is a stormwater management plan, absent calculations. Now, the reality is, if you take the lot and take what's draining there today, and take what's going to be the proposed improvements, that the, the increase is probably negligible in terms of the overall watershed, in terms of impervious area and that sort of thing. So that means, so from a microcosm, the, the micro view, there are things going on to deal with stormwater. The macro view, it's not as if we want to run, the, felt it was necessary to run an entire watershed study to look at one lot. And the town engineer uh, agreed with us in, 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 uh, in his comments as well. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Okay, we'll now open the public comment period. If there's anyone from the public who would like to speak, please come forward, give us your name and your address.